Hey guys, what's up? Jed here. Welcome to another video. I hope you're all having a great day. In today's video, we're going to be sketching graphs. So let's take a look at our first example. Here we are being asked to sketch the following. Y is equal to X squared plus X minus six. The first thing you're going to want to do is to factorize this quadratic. You should know how to factorize quadratics by this stage. If you have forgotten, check out our video on factorizing quadratics. Okay, so let's carry on. We're going to factorize this quadratic to get x plus 3 and x minus 2. Once you factorize the quadratic, you can begin highlighting important values in your equation. So the first important value is this constant here, minus 6. This is where your graph is going to cut the y-axis. The next two important points are this plus 3 and this minus 2. These values are the roots of your graph, and they are where the graph will cut the x-axis. However, even though the graph will actually cut the y-axis at minus 6, it won't cut the x-axis at plus 3 and minus 2. Instead, it's going to cut the x-axis at minus 3 and positive 2. So it's going to be the opposite operation for your roots. So let's see what that looks like. I know it's going to cut my y-axis at minus 6, so I'm just going to put a point there and I'm going to label it. And now it's going to cut my x-axis at minus 3 and positive 2. So now that you've labeled all the intersection points, you can go ahead and draw this graph. This is a positive quadratic, so it's going to be a U shape. So your graph should look like the following. And there it is. Okay, for the next example, we're going to try another quadratic expression, but this one is a unique one. So let's go ahead and sketch this using the methods we've learned in the previous example. I'm going to first begin by factorizing. We get y is equal to x plus 1 and x plus 1. And here you have what we call a repeated root. So what does this mean when it comes to sketching the graph? Well, let's highlight the important points and plot them. So we have a y-intercept of plus 1, and we have a repeated root. So when you plot them, it's going to look like this. The repeated root only takes one specific point. And remember what we said, if your roots inside the brackets are plus 1, then they are plotted as negative 1 on the graph. So it's going to come down from this region here and go up to this region here. So our graph should look like this. And there you have it, another example of sketching a quadratic, however this time with a repeated root. Okay, in our next example we're going to be looking at cubic graphs. And as you can see we already have the graph up. And the reason for this is I just want to explain some important characteristics of this graph. So for a cubic graph, it comes from this bottom left hand quadrant and it leaves in the top right hand quadrant. Now this characteristic of a cubic graph is very, very important and we're going to use it in our next example. So let's have a look at that now. So here we have to sketch the following. How you know it's a cubic graph is because you're going to have an x multiplied by an x multiplied by an x, which gives us x cubed. So this is definitely going to be a cubic graph. So we're going to sketch this in a similar way as we have done to quadratics. And we're going to need to get their intersection points with the y-axis and the x-axis. So I know for a fact that this cubic graph is going to intersect at minus 1, plus 1, and plus 2. Again, don't forget, the intersection points are going to have the opposite symbol of the numbers inside of the brackets. So let me just get those intersection points down. And they look like this. Now I have to find out where my graph cuts the y-axis. Instead of expanding all three brackets, which is going to take some time, you could just multiply out these three numbers together and that will give you the y-intercept. So let's go ahead and do that. Positive 1 multiplied by negative 1 gives us negative 1. And then we multiply that by negative 2, which gives us positive 2. Because two negatives multiplied give us a positive. So the y-intercept is going to be here at positive 2. Now remember from our previous example, the cubic graph comes from the bottom left hand corner here and leaves in the top right hand corner here. So let's see what happens in this region with the intersection points. Okay, so once you've drawn your graph, it should look like this. The cubic comes from the bottom left hand corner and it intercepts the first root of minus 1. It then cuts the y-axis at the y-intercept of 0 and 2, goes down, cuts the second root where x is 1, dips down and comes back up again and cuts the final root where x is 2. Then it just carries on going up. All of these are key features in the cubic. You need to learn them. And as long as you're writing down the roots and the y-intercept, you should be fine. Okay, for our next example, we're going to speak about how to sketch the reciprocal function. That is y is equal to 1 over x. And I have it up on the right-hand corner here. 
It looks a bit confusing at first, but the actual characteristics of the scroff are pretty straightforward and simple. It doesn't cut the Y axis or the X axis at any point. So you don't really need to worry about intersecting points when it comes to this graph. However, in another topic, transforming graphs, the reciprocal function can intersect with the X and Y axis. So definitely go and check out that video on transforming graphs. But just to sketch graphs, all you need to know is how to sketch Y is equal to one over X. So let's talk about ways to remember this graph here. Well, the way I like to remember it is this. The reciprocal function, which is the one with the fraction, 1 over x, is kind of like two curved L shapes. There's an L shape in the top right hand corner and an L shape in the bottom left hand corner. And they do not touch the x or the y axis. So as long as you can remember this idea here, it should be pretty straightforward to sketch out. Definitely commit to memorizing this. And I nearly forgot to mention, although it doesn't have any intersecting points with the x and the y axis, the graph of the reciprocal function does go through the points one, one and minus one, minus one. Okay, now let's look at sketching exponential functions. An exponential function is where you have a base value to the power of a variable. In this case, we have two to the power of X. And it's pretty straightforward when it comes to sketching exponential functions. You just need to remember the key characteristics, which are that it comes from the negative X axis. It never touches the negative X axis. So it comes from the negative X axis and it slowly starts to creep up. It always, I repeat, it always intersects the Y axis at one. And then it keeps getting steeper and steeper and it just keeps going up. Now let's see what happens to the graph when we change this base number here to a larger number. Now we are looking at the exponential function of Y equals three to the power of X. It looks nearly identical to y equals two to the power of x. It even intercepts the y axis at the same point. It never touches the x axis and it has the same increasing characteristic that the previous exponential function had. And if we increase the base value some more, let's see what it looks like. This is now y equals four to the power of x, looking very similar to the previous exponential functions. Again, intercepting the y axis at one. So what is the difference between these exponential graphs? Well, let's take a look at this by putting them next to each other. As you can see, they all have similar shapes. However, as the base number increases, the graphs tend to become steeper in this area here of the X, Y axis. However, they are less steep in this region here, but they all cut the Y axis at one. For sketching exponential graphs, this is much as you need to know. However, like I said previously, in the next lesson, we're gonna be transforming these graphs, which means we're gonna be moving these graphs about. And if you understand how to sketch these graphs and what they look like, transforming them is going to be relatively straightforward. Okay, now we're going to be looking at trigonometric functions and how to sketch them. The first function we're going to be looking at is y is equal to sine of x. There are some very important key features of this graph. First things first, you need to understand that the input value for this function is an angle in degrees. Hence, we see numbers with degrees on the X axis. These are all angles. However, the Y axis is just a regular number. So let's label these important points that occur on the sine graph. And here they are. For every 90 degrees, something happens to this graph. So for the first 90 degrees, it goes to a Y value of one, for the next 90 degrees, back down to a Y value of zero. For the 90 degrees after that, down to a Y value of minus one. And for the final 90 degrees in a full oscillation, back up to a Y value of zero. The graph then repeats itself forever. It also repeats itself in the negative X axis in the exact same way. And this is the function Y is equal to sine X. So definitely commit to memorizing how to sketch it and the important points that it goes through. Okay, now let's study the next trigonometric function, y is equal to cos of x. It's very similar to the sine function, except it has different key points. For example, it doesn't start with a y value of zero, it starts with a y value of one. And then for the next 90 degrees, it drops to a y value of zero. The 90 degrees after that, a y value of minus one, and so on and so forth. Like the sine graph, the cos graph will repeat every 360 degrees forever. However, the question can determine how much of the function you sketch by giving you this inequality here. And it will ask you, for example, to sketch y is equal to cos of x for x is in between zero and 360 degrees. So in this case, it really just wants you to sketch it between x is zero and 360 degrees. 
Now let's write the important key points for the cos graph, and they look like this. Again, just reiterating that it is very similar to the sine graph. And if you really think about it and look carefully, if you take the sine graph and move it to the left by 90 degrees, you get the cos graph. So remember all of these key characteristics and points here, and definitely practice at sketching the cos graph. And now for our final trigonometric function, we have y is equal to tan of x. Now, this graph looks different to the sine and the cos graph. However, it also has patterns that we can commit to memorizing to help us sketch this graph. For instance, between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees, the graph has a full oscillation. And what does this oscillation look like? Well, it comes from negative infinity, so all the way down here, and then it goes all the way up, cuts the x-axis, and then continues traveling upwards. It never actually touches negative 90 degrees or positive 90 degrees. And then it repeats beyond 90 degrees and before negative 90 degrees. And these oscillations occur every 180 degrees. So we can summarize this by saying, between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees, the graph cuts the x-axis at zero. It will then cut the x-axis on its next oscillation, but this is after 180 degrees. The graph will never actually touch 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees in the same way that the graph will not touch 270 degrees and negative 270 degrees. These boundaries that the graph will not touch are known as asymptotes, and visually they look like this. Also, the inequality or the boundaries that you might get for the tan graph are most likely going to be from minus 90 degrees to 90 degrees. So just bear that in mind. However, they can very well give you boundaries that range from 0 to 360 degrees or into the negative degrees. Again, commit to memorizing the tan graph and all of its key features so that it will be very easy for you to sketch it if you are ever asked to do so. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something from this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks again and take care.